today's lab we are doing the um, nitration of bromobenzene and the nitration of bromobenzene is an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. You've seen substitution reactions before. The outcome is you substitute one atom for another. What's different than what you've seen previously with uh, different types of organic compounds such as alkyl halides or alcohols, things of that type is that this is an electrophilic aromatic substitution, not nucleophilic. So the electrophilic aromatic substitution, those reactions are carried out primarily on benzene and its derivatives. So what we're going to use today is bromobenzene, and we're going to use the mixture of nitric acid and sulfuric acid. This is our nitrating mixture. And when I say nitrating, these will react together as an acid and base reaction to generate water and this nitronium ion that we call the NO2 plus. The nitronium ion is the electrophile that will attach on to the benzene ring. Now there's a couple things we need to worry about when we carry out electrophilic aromatic substitutions. If there is a substituent already present on the benzene ring, such in this case bromine, Bromine can do two things. It can activate or deactivate the ring. And what that does, it either makes it more reactive or less reactive. The other thing that the substituent can do is also direct the incoming group. And the incoming group is the nitronium ion. So what we find is that there's three positions on the benzene ring relative to the bromine itself. We can either have substitution take place ortho, we can have it take place para to the bromine, or we can have it uh, take place nitro. If you notice here that I've only put down trace, very rarely do you get much of this at all, just a trace amount. Um, and when you look at bromine, bromine itself, halogens overall are considered to be deactivating groups. And what that means is they slow the reaction down. Most deactivating groups are meta directors, but bromine, the halogens, because of how they stabilize the uranium ion in the reaction mechanism, they will direct incoming groups ortho and para. So these are the two products we're looking at mostly for today. Now, you would think that since there's two ortho positions, we may have a greater statistical chance of getting more ortho compared to the para. But we also have to take in consideration the size of the nitro group and how easy it is to get next to the bromine, which is fairly large atom. So we're going to kind of take a look at our yields today. Uh, and once we do the reaction, we have to isolate these isomers, if you will, of each other. And the process that we're going to use for that is fractional crystallization not your typical recrystallization. It's very similar, but fractional crystallization. And then we can separate the ortho from the para. And after we do that, we're going to subject what we obtain from that to TLC and see how pure or impure those substances are. We'll do weights and melting points um, and then see how they compare to the pure substance. In terms of the glassware and apparatus that we need, we need a 25 milliliter round bottom flask. We need the Claisen condenser. Uh, we will need a thermometer adapter and obviously a thermometer. And then we'll need a condenser uh, and not the fractionating column, just your regular condenser, stir bar, thermometer. We're going to use water as our heating source, a water bath today. It's going to serve two purposes. Um, we're not going to heat it initially and we'll have ice on hand. We may need to chill it before we heat it, uh, but we will use a hot water bath eventually to heat the materials uh, in the round bottom flask. We'll need a couple of graduated cylinders, um, different size Erlenmeyer flasks. This is gonna come in the second part where we're isolating the different products from fractional crystallization. And then obviously anytime we're using the glassware, we'll need a, a couple of the the clamps and then pipettes is needed, tubing for the water. We we'll still need the water in, water out that we've always done when we're using the condensers. Uh, what I've done is to clamp the 25 milliliter round bottom flask to the ring stand and notice I have a beaker of water. The hot plate is not on because initially what I want to do is to add the 
nitrous, nitric acid with the sulfuric acid, we need to generate that nitronium ion first, and then we'll set up the apparatus and add the bromobenzene. There may be some heat generated. That's the reason I have it just in a regular water bath. It's not chilled, it's just regular tap water. If I need to chill it down, I can put some ice in there, uh, but we want it close to room temperature before we start the reaction. So here I've got four milliliters of nitric acid that I'm gonna pour in to the round bottom flask. Next I'm gonna add the four mils of the concentrated sulfuric acid. And then I'm going to stir this just to mix that well. And I'm just gonna take a measure of the temperature inside just to see if it has increased. I'm going to stop stirring just so I can get it in there a little bit better. It looks like it's around 40 degrees, close to 40. Just going to let that stir. We probably want it closer to 25 before we start. So I'm just going to let that stir for a while and I'll recheck it in a couple minutes to see. One thing I just want to draw to your attention also is when you're using these concentrated acids, sulfuric acid and nitric acid, uh, really take care when you're using these. Um, I've got a piece of paper towel here that I'm putting anything that had these acids on here. Um, it's ideal if you wear some type of long sleeve, long pants. If you think you get anything on you, don't wait to ask me or your lab instructor. You just go straight to the faucet and rinse it for a good 15 minutes with water. Um, so just be careful. It's a good idea. As soon as I'm done with the sulfuric and the nitric acid, I will change my gloves before I continue setting up the other part of the apparatus. We'll just give that a couple minutes and then we'll come back and check it. The temperature of the um, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, was uh, around 25 degrees. I went ahead and set up the Claisen, uh, Claisen adapter here, which to that is attached the thermometer adapter. Inserted the thermometer. Here's our condenser, water going in the bottom, out the top. We're going to add the bromobenzene through the top of the condenser and let it come in that way. Um, I've got my mixture stirring. Uh, we're going to add the bromobenzene. We've got 4.5 milliliters of the bromobenzene we're going to add, but I'm going to add it in half milliliter increments over about 10 minute period. I'm going to check, after an addition, I'm going to check the um, temperature. To check the temperature, what we're going to have to do is to cut the stirring mechanism off and then lower the thermometer in there. We'll just have to periodically keep doing that until all of the bromobenzene has been added. So I'm going to go ahead and add about half a milliliter. And again, we're going to add that through the top of the condenser. We typically don't see much of a temperature change, although it's possible for it to be somewhat exothermic. Uh, I think one of the reasons we've already got this chilled in a, in a water bath, it's not ice, but it is you know room temperature that can certainly take some of the heat away. I'm not seeing a temperature uh, increase, so I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, some more. temperatures around 30. We want to make sure that the temperature does not um, go above this 55 uh, to 50 range. Uh, that's kind of a good temperature to keep for mononitration. Uh, once we put a nitro group on that benzene ring, the ring is deactivated, so that's a plus to help us uh, limit how much dinitration could happen. Temperatures hovering around 30 degrees. Let's 
still around 30, so not much difference. It's been about nine minutes since we did the first edition. As you can tell, the color of the solution is getting a little bit more yellow with color. Uh, the other thing that will most likely happen, because the product, these nitrated bromobenzenes, are not going to be soluble in the acidic environment. And so we'll probably start forming a precipitate. And at that point, it may be difficult to stir with a stirring bar. Uh, we'll try to let it stir as much as we can. So it's very common to see a precipitate form during this reaction. Check one more time here before I add the last. Looks like it's about 35 degrees, but still well below the 50 to 55. So I'm going to go ahead and add this last amount. So now what we want to do, I'm going to turn the, um, the heating uh, mechanism for the hot plate on, but I'm going to do it gradually because we want to let this heat for about 15 minutes, somewhere between 15 and 55 degrees. We won't start counting the 15 minutes until we're at that temperature, uh, but I'm going to kind of start it out a little on the low side. We'll check that uh, temperature inside periodically. I'll probably take another thermometer and just check what the water bath is on the outside just to make sure it's not above the 50, 55 degrees. Um, so uh, we'll come back and take a look at the temperatures um, and then go from there.